All right, Ripple XRP holders, it is official. This license changes everything. In today's video, we have some breaking crypto news about Bitcoin and other major cryptocurrencies, including Ethereum and XRP. You know, they've been rocked by the Federal Reserve this year, raising interest rates, raising a lot of questions like when will the Fed pivot and lower interest rates? What effect will this have? on the entire cryptocurrency market, let alone the rest of the economy. And when will they unload the money printer again and send us all camping on the beaches of the moon? So in this video, we're gonna discuss all of this. Comment 777 if you're feeling blessed. Comment 777 if you're feeling bullish. And if you're gonna become the first millionaire in your family tree, you know what to do. Confirm it by tapping that like button, tapping that subscribe button, and let's run it. All right, bull runners, welcome back to the channel. So, so far, the Bitcoin price has rallied up over 100% this year, which was helped by BlackRock, the world's largest fund manager that looks after around $10 trillion worth of assets, which drived a surge of Wall Street money into Bitcoin and the rest of the crypto market, regardless of the Federal Reserve raising interest rates because massive institutions, well, you know, they want to be first, just like you do in the crypto market. Now, a former BlackRock managing director has predicted that it's only a matter of months until the SEC approves a long-awaited Bitcoin spot ETF, giving multiple funds that manage around $17.7 trillion worth of assets the green light to buy Bitcoin. And the SEC will probably approve all spot Bitcoin ETF applications at the same time. And I don't think they want to give anybody first mover advantage, uh, said former BlackRock managing director, Stephen uh, Schoenfield at a London conference. And he gave the SEC three to six months until it approves a Bitcoin spot ETF and subsequently approves all of them. And last month, a $1.5 trillion manager named Franklin Templeton filed with the SEC for a Bitcoin spot ETF as well. And the SEC decided to delay until early next year for these ETF applications. And instead of completely rejecting the whole entire list and denying them, they've asked for comments, which is a marginal, but it's a significant improvement in the dialogue in regards to spot Bitcoin ETFs. And I'm gonna be talking about in this video, how this affects XRP. And meanwhile, the SEC has been instructed by US lawmakers to re-examine crypto asset manager Grayscale's application to convert its flagship Bitcoin trust to a fully fledged spot Bitcoin ETF. So the SEC is most likely going to have to allow Grayscale Bitcoin Trust to be converted into an ETF. And when they allow Grayscale, they will allow BlackRock and they will allow the others. Now, asset managers are already beginning to adapt their offerings depending on what happens next in the market. And there is evidently an increasing move from smaller providers such as Valkyrie and Van Eck to diversify out of Bitcoin and diversify into Ethereum ETF. So this will give them an added selling point once the big institutional players are unleashed onto the Bitcoin ETF market as they diversify into Ethereum as well too. Now, what will that do for XRP? And if you're wondering, you know, if you're early to the market, are you late to the market? Remember this, bull markets are born on pessimism, they grow on skepticism, they mature on optimism, and they die in euphoria. So in other words, bull markets start from the lows of the bear when risks are prominent and sentiment is very, very poor and investing is boring, markets are dry, it's not very fun. You see the consolidation periods happen over the course of months and you're waiting for the markets to go up, but nothing seems to happen. Well, that's when the savvy investors are backing up the truck and they're loading up on their favorite crypto assets. Whereas 99% of retail markets you know, retail traders, everyday people that are receiving text messages, or you get a text message from your uncle or from your grandma and say, hey, have you heard about Shiba Inu coin? Well, that's 99% of retail. They wait until they see something like Shiba Inu on the news or Dogecoin on the news and Elon Musk on Saturday Night Live talking about it. And then they buy the euphoria thinking that they're going to be the next millionaire. And then that's when the bull market is already over and it's too late. This is why the rich get richer and the poor get poorer because the rich invest when it's boring and they sell when it's exciting and the poor invest when it's exciting and they sell when it's boring. They're hobbyists, but I know that you're different. That's why you're watching this video right now. That's why you're subscribing to the bull runners channel because you are preparing before the Bitcoin ETFs are approved and before Bitcoin goes through the halving in 2024 and ripples lawsuit is officially over. So realistically, 
Let's talk about how long do you have to prepare before we start to see massive price action in the market. Well, Judge Annalisa Torres just denied the SEC's request to appeal a part of her recent decision in the XRP lawsuit. In July, she found that some of Ripple's sales of XRP were unregistered securities sold to institutional investors, which violated federal law. However, she also ruled that other XRP distributions and you know trading XRP on the secondary market didn't qualify as securities transactions. So the SEC wanted to appeal this part of the ruling, arguing it set a risky precedent for applying securities laws to crypto. And Judge Torres rejected this appeal, saying it didn't meet the legal standard for an early appeal. Now, the case will proceed to trial in April of 2024. While the SEC may still attempt to appeal the overall case later, this decision questions you know, how strongly securities regulators can oversee crypto through regulation by enforcement as the judge's previous ruling indicated that not all XRP sales violated securities laws. So in April of 2024, we should see some massive announcements from Ripple, which is roughly seven months from right now. And I know that that's not what you want to hear because you know that seems like an eternity away, especially in the crypto, new crypto market. But I do have good news for you. That gives you roughly seven months to prepare or less because the markets like to move before the news is officially announced, but less than seven months to prepare by accumulating as much of your favorite crypto assets as possible before the next major rally. So what's the best way to grow your portfolio right now so by the time we see insane price appreciation you know, for Bitcoin, Ethereum, or even XRP and the rest of the markets, you are already months ahead of the competition, months ahead of the retail market, and you're not FOMOing in during the belief the thrill and the euphoria stage trying to buy the top when the majority of the gains have already been made. Well, right now we're building out our financial education platform to show you how to do just that. And if you wanna be notified first when we launch, then all you have to do is go to bullrunners.com, enter in your best email, and we'll notify you first so you can be ready before the next major bull run and you can be early to these markets. So where are we right now in the current market cycle in this crypto market you know rally over the next few years when will the markets top out well of january this year this was one of the best crypto months ever when 2023 started bitcoin was up over 40 percent ethereum was up 33 percent and seven of the top 100 tokens were up over 100 percent leading the market so were the risks overblown well we don't think so because the fed raised rates four times in 2023 and a total of 10 times in a row since March of 2022, simultaneously shrinking their balance sheet by over $500 billion this year. And March of this year, Silicon Valley Bank and Silvergate Bank collapsed, and then the Fed stepped in and erased six months worth of quantitative tightening, which is what sent Bitcoin from roughly $19,800 upwards of $30,000. And then a couple months later, First Republic Bank failed and then JP Morgan Chase acquired them in May. But by then the Fed had started tightening again on their balance sheet. So Bitcoin didn't have much steam left to run while they offloaded their bonds, which caused massive skepticism and fear in the markets for another sell-off. Then in June, the SEC decided to sue both Binance and Coinbase, the two largest crypto exchanges, alleging that they failed to properly register with the SEC and listing unregistered securities. And many other enforcement actions followed right after this when Bitcoin reached a high of the year. So during the start of every bull market, extreme pessimism and disbelief sets the stage for the beginning of a new bull market. And when it's seemingly the most fearful or the most skeptical to be able to invest into crypto, well, that's generally the best time because when the news is all positive and it's spreading all this amazing news, well, that's when everyone's jumping in. So contrary to popular belief, you want to walk away and do the opposite of what the 99% do. So the rally for the first six months of the year could arguably be the disbelief rally that you see in the Wall Street cheat sheet ch chart that shows the psychology of a market cycle. Then we go into the hope stage, early 2024, 
pre-Bitcoin halving before the ETFs get approved. So I would personally expect, which again, I could be wrong here. It's not financial advice. It's all educational purposes and example purposes only. But I would expect the markets to rally before the ETFs get approved and then a sell-off happen after because everyone likes to buy the rumors and then sell the news when the events actually take place. Then the optimism, belief, and thrill rally to take place post Bitcoin halving during the summer of 2024, if we aren't going through, you know, World War III event or some catastrophic black swan event by then. So in the meantime, companies like Ripple, they're continuing to make massive moves behind the scenes along with other top altcoin projects. And Brad Garlinghouse just posted that it's official Ripple is now fully licensed to provide digital payment token services in Singapore. And earlier this year, Ripple received its principal approval of its major payment institution or MPI license application from the Monetary Authority of Singapore, which is massive. And four months later, Ripple announced that its Singapore subsidiary has secured its full MPI license to provide digital payment token services over in Singapore. And an MPI license is a big deal because it allows Ripple to operate as a major player in the payment services industry over in Singapore. And Ripple has the authority to handle larger volumes of payments and offer a broader range of their payment services overseas. And in 2022, last year, Singapore secured the number four spot on the IMD World Digital Competitiveness Ranking, which means, and it measures a country's ability to adopt new technology. So they are at the forefront, whereas the United States is lagging behind due to agencies like the SEC and Congress not stepping in to take over. And global finance leaders agree that digital assets are here to stay. According to Ripple and the meetings that they've done, the surveys that they, they'd have accrued, roughly 90% of global financial leaders believe blockchain technology and digital assets will have a significant or massive impact on businesses, finance, and society in the next three years. And almost half of the Asia Pacific finance leadership plans to use crypto for cross-border payments. And in general, Payments across Asia Pacific will continue to trend increasingly digital and cashless transaction volume is set to increase by about 109% by 2025. And Ripple will continue to prioritize these regions for adoption of its global payment solutions. Now that's according to Ripple. And also a former Swift employee of over 20 years, he revealed that XRP could soon be utilized by Swift. A brand in crypto replacing Swift. So we did speak yeah. earlier where you mentioned that it's not necessarily about replacing Swift, it's about complementing yeah. it. So let's yeah. get some more information on this. I used to work for Swift. I was Swift for 20 years, so Swift is flowing through my veins. Swift is the pre preeminent messaging system for the financial industry. And I think um, we were also seeing that Swift are changing their, their network capability so that real time will be a possibility as, there, uh, as well. But we may also see Ripple XRP moving across the Swift network as a currency when we're perhaps using something like FX. So with all this positive news happening right now in the markets, XRP derivatives volume has surged by about 185% across exchanges. And when you combine that with the settlement date set for April 16th, Lots of exciting things are in the pipeline for Ripple and XRP this year and early 2024. Now, derivatives are absolutely massive for XRP, and there are three types of derivatives that tie into blockchain, which would be absolutely insane if they lived on the XRP ledger. The first type is forwards contracts or futures contracts. Now, forwards contracts and futures contracts involve two parties betting on an outcome over time. The only difference between the two is futures is you know for an exchange and the forward is between two individuals or anytime it's outside of a centralized exchange for example let's say that you have you know two farmers well farmer a could say that the price of a tomato will go up go up by one dollar on average across the country by the end of the year and farmer b says that the price of the tomato will go down by a hundred dollars well who's right let's just say they put up some money they put up a hundred dollars and whoever is correct gets the benefit of the outcome. The difference between futures and forwards in this example scenario here is that futures would take place at let's say the the farmers market whereas forwards would take place at the farm through, you know, a private private deal that they're doing. The next derivative is an option which grants the option but not the obligation to bet 
on a future outcome. So let's say that you have a third farmer betting $100 that the price of a tomato will increase by $1 by the end of the year, you know, after what farmer A has said. So if he decides to pay the fee to exercise that option, he gets his payout. And if he decides not to exercise the option, he just loses the fee and not anything else. And then the final type of derivative is what's called a swap. This involves parties exchanging outcomes of different events. So let's say farmer A and farmer B want to swap outcomes for two different events. And farmer A now thinks that a tomato will go down in price, down by a dollar, whereas farmer B thinks that it will go up by a dollar by the end of the year. So they would swap their derivatives. So why would derivatives be used and how does this affect XRP and how big is the derivatives market? Well, the first purpose of derivatives is to be used for hedging and reducing risk associated with uncertain events. Speculation is another common purpose, allowing traders to profit from price changes. And then leverage or borrowing against assets is used to amplify potential gains or losses as well, where they could trade at like 10x, 50x, or even 100x off of debt. But one of the main benefits for this market specifically is tokenization you know, on the blockchain and through the XRP ledger, whereas tokenization on the blockchain makes derivatives more complex, but also more automated and more traceable and trackable through smart contracts to create automated agreements. For example, imagine tokenizing a real estate property through a smart contract where mo multiple investors could earn revenue from the rental income without having to buy the property outright. You know, They participate in the smart contract through uh, NFTs if they want, and they're able to benefit from passive income. So this automation streamlines the derivatives market, making it more efficient, but also does complicate it too. It increases layers uh, increasingly and integrating with XRP into derivatives could reduce XRP supply, increase demand, and potentially raise its price. Now, there's no guarantees there. Obviously, you know, not financial advice, purely educational example purposes only, but, but Ripple's strategy may extend beyond cross-border payments into the derivative space over the next few years. And there's the real world value of the derivatives market. And then there's the notional value when we talk about how big the derivatives market is. So the derivatives market is said to be over one quadrillion dollars in notional value on the high end, which is absolutely insane. And I know you're thinking, how could that be? Well, this is largely because there are numerous derivatives in existence available on virtually every, every possible type of investment asset, including equities, you know, commodities, bonds, and every different type of currency from you know, fiat and uh, digital or cryptocurrency you can imagine. So the derivatives market's notional value uh, could be massive due to its layers of complexity and tokenized assets and smart contracts can add to this complexity and add to the market size. Whereas the real world value of the market is influenced by these layers and transactions and the real world value is a little bit smaller, but it's still massive. And Ripple Labs just became a member of the 1.2 quadrillion derivatives markets, International Swaps and Derivative Association or the ISDA. And they joined the likes of JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, CME Group, City, BNY Mellon, Bank of American, and the London Stock Exchange. Over a thousand plus institutions are members in 79 countries around the world. So think about it. The ISDA would not approve Ripple if they didn't adhere to regulatory requirements for derivatives around the world. So when institutions need liquidity on demand, they would buy XRP, taking it off the market, reducing the supply of XRP in the market, and increase the demand. So if the derivatives market is upwards of one quadrillion in notional value, let alone hundreds of millions in real world value, XRP cannot be cheap forever. So let me know your thoughts. Do you hold any XRP? Or what other top altcoins do you hold in your portfolio? If you want to be notified first when we release our list of the top projects that we hold in our portfolio for this bull run that we believe will perform very, very well, then you can go to bullrunners.com to be notified first when we launch our financial education platform. And if enough people like this video and they comment 777 below, then we will release this list to you guys for free if you want it for free so you can see it first and what we hold in our portfolio for this bull market that we are bullish on. And as always, we're gonna be backing up our truck all the way to the bank, grabbing the bags, packing them and stacking them, leaving no bags left behind because we believe that the spending power of the dollar is going down in value. That's a fact based on inflation, blockchain technology, distributed ledger technology is going up in interest. That's the truth. And together, we're all going camping on the beaches of the moon. 
So I will see you on the next video. I will see you on bullrunners.com. As always, you know what to do. Stay bullish.